Cryonite's non-poisonous properties make sanitation very easy. The carbon dioxide snow can be applied to almost every surface without any risk of damage or residue. Bedbugs are developing resistance against many poisons. Cryonite will always be effective. Hotel rooms can be used immediately after treatment, which means that the hotels can maximize their occupancy rates. Sanitation of sensitive areas in dry food industry can be done during ongoing production without contaminating the food products. Kitchens can also be treated while you live and eat there. The carbon dioxide used is recycled from industrial processes, making the whole process very environmentally friendly. Cryonite kills insects in all stages, adults, larvae and eggs even in otherwise hard to reach places. All you need is the cryonite equipment and a gas cylinder provided with a dip tube. Always use gas cylinders provided with a dip tube. The dip tube is necessary to get liquid carbon dioxide from the cylinder. This will be explained in the theory chapter. The cryonite equipment is easy to use as we will show you in this film. You can find more information about the cylinders and other practical details on the instructions mounted on the trolley. Mount the cylinder in the trolley. Check that the cylinder is correctly positioned and strapped in. The valve is well protected by the trolley. Remove the plastic ceiling from the cylinder and attach the hose. Be careful not to damage the threads. Use the enclosed tool and tie them smoothly. To attach the gun to the hose you'll first have to pull the rear section of the coupling backwards and then press it onto the hose. Secure the coupling by pressing the black ring forward and then turn it. The gun should not be detached when there is pressure in the hose. The safety stop prevents unintentional spraying. Open the valve and release the safety stop. When the safety stop has been released, the snow stream can be adjusted. The deeper you press the lever, the more impact the snow stream will have. The cryonite gun is continuously adjustable in length and the nozzle can be bent in any direction wanted, in up to a 90 degrees angle. This gives good access to different places where the pests hide. In this sequence two snow streams are shown. One full speed and one with reduced speed. Even though the cooling effect may be reduced, a lower speed may sometimes be warranted. If you're concerned about blowing insects or dust away, use a lower speed. Always avoid layers of snow as the snow insulates and the freezing becomes less efficient. Check that the nut is fastened to the nozzle every now and then. For best results, don't build thick layers. Two thin layers are much more effective than one thick. Eggs, larvae and adult insects will be killed when they are hit by this snow. The jet nozzle is meant for cleaning in hard to reach places and has a poor killing and cooling effect. It is of utmost importance that the jet nozzle is correctly mounted. Tighten the nut by hand. Don't use any tool. Check it every now and then during sanitation as a loose jet nozzle can inflict serious damage. After sanitation, close the valve and tighten it. It's important to empty the hose completely. Wait until no sound of gas is heard.
loosen the black security ring by turning it half a turn. Then pull the rear part of the connection backwards and remove the gun from the hose. If you have detached the gun without emptying the hose or if you have turned the gas on without the gun attached, there will be some pressure in the hose. This will make it impossible to attach the gun again. If this is the case, carefully loosen the nut on the cylinder half a turn to bleed the gas. When the hose is completely emptied, the gun can be attached. Make sure you have good ventilation in the room by opening the door from the corridor or opening the window or door out from the room to the outside. This ensures that the carbon dioxide concentration doesn't reach levels that may cause a threat to working. The carbon dioxide used is produced as an industrial byproduct. This means that no extra carbon dioxide is released to the atmosphere. As the carbon dioxide is a heavy gas, it's important to avoid standing in deepenings or holes when you sanitate, as you need to have your respiratory organs above the gas. To inhale, a great quantity of carbon dioxide is dangerous, but as shown in this diagram, the levels of carbon dioxide in an unventilated room 6 times 6 times 2 meters during 3 minutes of sanitation is well under established levels. The level at face height is always under 0.5%, while the level closer to the floor peaks but subsides quickly. For further information about working with carbon dioxide, please visit www.lindegas.com. Don't forget to use your gloves and eye protectors. To avoid static electricity, the clip should be connected to earth. If the nozzle doesn't produce snow or a very thin stream of snow and you know that the cylinder isn't empty, please ensure that it's provided with a dip tube. The dip tube is necessary to make cryonite work properly. Although rare, if the nozzle is clogging or if the snow isn't nice, the cylinder might be contaminated. Please exchange the cylinder for a new and clean one. If you spray repeatedly during longer periods of time, especially with the jet nozzle attached, and during high air humidity, the snow might get uneven and bigger particles can be formed. This problem will disappear if you stop for a while. As earlier shown, if there is pressure in the hose, it's for safety reasons impossible to attach the gun. If this happens, carefully loosen the nut on the cylinder half a turn to bleed the gas. When the hose is completely emptied, the gun can be attached again. For more detailed instructions, read the manual on Cryonite's website. Please don't hesitate to ask for further advice and help. You'll find the manual and us at www.cryonite.com. Bedbugs are wingless insects, roughly oval in shape, flat and 5 to 6 mm, that is a fifth to a quarter of an inch long when fully grown. They are pale cream in the juvenile stages, become a rust brown as an adult and change to a deeper red brown following a blood meal. There are five juvenile stages known as nymphs that are miniature versions of the adults in general appearance. Each nymphal stage requires at least one blood meal to molt to the next stage. The length of the life cycle is variable and is dependent on the temperature. For example, in cold conditions, they can live for almost two years even without a blood meal. But in average temperatures of around 23 degrees Celsius, that is 74 degrees Fahrenheit, the life cycle takes approximately two months to complete, and the adult can live for almost four to five months. All nymphal stages require blood for nutrition. They respond to the body warmth of a host and their mouth parts are especially adapted for piercing skin and sucking blood. Being nocturnal, this often happens at night. Then, during the day, they seek shelter in narrow, dark places to digest the blood. Cryonite has shown to be very effective against bedbugs. As the bedbugs are developing resistance to some poisons, cryonite will continue to be effective. Being a non-toxic treatment, cryonite also allows the room to be let immediately after treatment. It leaves no residues and can also be used as a preventive treatment. Bedbugs tend to shelter in dark locations and want to be as close as possible to their hosts, the inhabitants of the bed. 
That's why it's important to carry out a thorough inspection before treatment. Concentrate on cracks and crevices in bed frames, the bases of the beds, mattresses, especially the beading and seams, headboards, wall floor junctions, soft furnishings in the room and cupboards. The things to look out for are live adults, the crawling nymphs, the cast skins of the nymphs, egg clusters and also blood spotting on the mattress and bed linen where they have fed and left a blood deposit. Feces spotting is often visible and if there is a heavy infestation you will also notice a rather sickly smell in the room. Before you start treating a room, make sure that all bedding including sheets, duvets, pillows, blankets and mattress covers are stripped from the bed and washed and dried separately at high temperatures to avoid any cross-contamination. On the bottom of the bed frame you will often find bed bugs hiding between the hessian backing and the bed. Always treat all the way around. Extend the lens and flex the nozzle to get a better angle. It's very important to get behind the headboard. This one can't be removed, but as you can see cryonite penetrates well through the narrow crack between the headboard and the wall. Any bed bugs harboring in this area will be killed. Bed bugs can easily be treated in the area between carpet and wall. Cryonite can be used behind flaking wallpaper without damaging the wall or wallpaper. There is a risk of transporting bed bugs too, as in this example, a chair. This chair is easy to treat thanks to the hole in the hessian backing underneath. This gives a very good coverage. Sleep tight with cryonite. Don't let the bed bugs bite at night. This first example shows work below a ventilation duct. It's vital to adjust the procedure to the target pests. In this case the pests are unknown but they are killed and dirt is removed at the same time. Here you can see how to get access under plates in a ceiling. Pests hiding between the plate and the frame are killed. And the otherwise time-consuming sanitation of a cable run is quickly done. It's also easy to disinfest parts of machinery. As you can see, the snow can travel quite a long distance through a pipe without melting. Pests are often found along the joint between wall and floor. The extendable gun makes it easy to work in any position. This sanitation is performed in a machinery that is sanitary sensitive as food is in direct contact with the surfaces. The non-poisonous carbon dioxide is replaceable here. Here the jet nozzle is used under a locker. You can clearly see that piles of dust are flushed out from under the locker. This place is hard to reach in any other way. Just be careful not to flush dust and insects away into sensitive areas. The non-toxic nature of cryonite makes sanitation very easy. Foodstuff left in place is not harmed even if covered by the carbon dioxide snow. After sanitation the kitchen can be used immediately.
a nice cup of coffee is well deserved. To make cryonite snow we need to use liquid carbon dioxide and so the cylinder needs to be equipped with a dip tube. The dip tube in the cylinder works the same way as a spray bottle you use to give your flowers a shower. In the cylinder, just as in a spray bottle, the dip tube takes liquid from the bottom because in a cylinder there is carbon dioxide in a liquid state at the bottom and a gaseous state at the top. Cryonite uses the liquid from the bottom. Studies performed by CTS have shown that quick freezing is important when killing insects with cold. The ability of insects to cope with a decrease in temperature is reduced when the freezing is fast. The patented cryonite snow and its unique properties give a very fast cooling to very low temperatures. In this diagram the cryonite snow is compared with other carbon dioxide snow qualities that differ in important characteristic matters. The cryonite snow is represented by the blue line and as demonstrated it's by far the best to obtain killing of insects at all places of measurement in a curved tubing as long as 2.5 meters. To achieve the best results don't build thick layers. Two thin layers are much more efficient than one thick. If the snow is built up in thick layers, the cooling effect is reduced because of the gas layer between the snow and its target. To illustrate how this works, you can here see water drops on a hot stove. The water drops don't boil away immediately as the heat transfer is reduced by the water vapor surrounding the drops. Gases are not good at conducting heat. Thin layers of snow, this is the right way to do it. If you want to get more information, please visit our website at www.cryonite.com.